So Max here, this is a video on how to make Argentinian asado, hope you like it. So the first thing that we are going to do is make a fire. And for that we are going to use some newspapers, uh, some thin pieces of wood, um, thicker pieces of wood. And uh, different people will tell you about different techniques to build the fire, but what you want uh, what I do is this kind of tower thing, like square. Uh, the thing is you need to light the newspaper. The light newspaper will light the thin pieces of wood, which will in turn light up the thick pieces of wood. And that's basically the science of it. I'm blowing it so that it really turns on. And now we'll do a bit of cleaning on the grate. Um, and I'll try not to knock the whole fire by doing it. But the idea is to put the grate over the fire, like this. I'm going to get some gloves afterwards because it's going to be, get pretty hot. And then you use a, a steel brush like this one. Or some people even use a newspaper. Uh, like the most usual, like very usual thing uh, when you don't have a one of those and that a lot of people here use is you just take some newspaper and you just do it. And if you do it quick, you're not going to get burned. But if you have one of these, it's a lot more comfortable and you don't get so smoked. And this is how you clean it. And it's pretty antiseptic too, you know. It's kill it with fire kind of thing. Okay, so we are going to salt the meat and start preparing it to put it on the grill. For here we have uh, some short rib, uh, costilla, asado de costilla we call it. And salt it basically to your taste. Uh, but use, I don't know how you call this, sal gruesa, which is like when it's quick grain. Katie. How do you call salgresa in the States? Katie has no idea. She's lived in Argentina all her life. Or most of um, Rock salt. Rock salt. Okay, thanks production. Um, yeah. And in parts like this, where it's hard for it to to get sticked to the meat, you can press it a bit. Uh, okay, over here, something that a lot of people don't do on the grill because it can result in being very dry and, uh, and hard, but if you do it carefully and slow, uh, it can be very nice taste. This is colita de cuadril. Um, Brazilians call it maminha, and I believe in the States this is called tri-tip. So, uh, this one is one that you should cook for very slowly, like more than one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, so this one will force us to go slow, but actually that improves uh, things for every cut. The slower, the slower, the better. Um, okay, so this is like on the top edge of how much salt I put on it. Some people put more salt on it. Um, people will have high blood pressure, something with uh, this much or less. Um, okay, and over here, have some vacío. Uh, this is the tapa de vacío and over here we have some thicker part that I will actually do this one. I have a bit more meat than I need because um, one of the people that was coming is not so... Uh, Bill, you miss it. Uh, if you see this, don't cry. And vacío is uh, called in the States flap, and 
I have a double table that I looked up online uh, with the translations of the cuts and I'll check what's it called for Brazilians. And I, I have some Brazilian friends who might be interested. Uh, And we're going to put a bit more because this is a very thick cut. So, vacío or flap has a lot more like intertwined fat inside of, inside of the cut. Like some of it is like so small that you don't even see it. But that means that it's a cut that's a lot gentler on you as a sort of maker. Like uh, it's harder to get wrong. A lot harder to get wrong than Colita de Quadrilo over here, which has a lot less fat on the inside. Um, and the fat is basically gives you uh, like a lot of variation uh, on the heat and the amount of time that you put on it. And over here we have an Argentinian favorite, Matambre, which is the roast meat. Um, Matambre also in Brazil, roast meat in the States. Uh, this is like the from the belly of the cow. And I think I would make this whole because we are few. So piensa, do we cut it? Yeah. Half? Alright. Okay, we have their approval. Yeah, well there's five of us, uh, one of them a little kid. Uh, how old is Sarah? Okay, we have Sarah who's three and we have four grown-ups, two men, two women. Um, so, including me. Uh, now, the usual calculations we Argentinians make is uh, 500 grams, half a kilogram, so that's 1.1 pounds per person. If you have a mixed audience uh, of uh, men and women, with the exception of some women uh, friends that we have that eat more than guys. Um, now for this cut, Matambre, I will put some lemon on it. So I'm going to put some lemon on my Matambre over here. Well, I'll do it on one side, on the side that's going to be towards the towards the coals and after putting it on the on the coals I will spread put some lemon on the other side uh, you see that I'm putting it on the on the non-fat side there's the other side that has the fat uh, you'll actually want it's preferable to first uh, put the heat on this side and uh, like until it gets like seared and then You'll turn it around and give it a long time on the fat side. Um, so I'm going to put the lemon and a bit of salt. And now we have uh, basically all our meat ready to put on the grill. All right. So we'll move out the fire to that side and uh, we'll spread the coals and bring the grill down. Okay, so we are put, going to put the meat. Um, so the thickest stuff, I'm going to put it in the back. You usually have more heat in the back. Um, it's like the hot air from the coals tends to move towards the back of the grill. So I'm going to put the Fry tip, colita de cuadril, laminia, um, the vacío flap, the right back, and more importantly, the whips, asado, pizza asado, and with the part with less fat on the matambre, the roast meat. Um, but you see it, all these coals, these are too many for. Uh, for the rosemary, so we'll move some of them to the back. Uh, you're hearing this sound that it's making, that's a good thing. Um, a rule uh, 
my dad has explained to me is that you always want to put the meat on top of a hot grill. Um, and it has to be better when I pour it. Uh, that will. So I'm spreading out the coals a bit so that um, the matambre doesn't receive, the roast meat doesn't receive uh, too much heat because as you see it's a lot thinner except at this part right here which is a little thicker but the rest of it is very very thin and we're going to cook it in the same amount of time that we cook the thicker cuts so in order to achieve that we need to give it very little heat um, okay and now I'm going to put some lemon to the top of the roast meat and I will salt the top of it and now the amount of coals you want to put has a lot to do with uh, the height of the grill this is to me an ideal height like this is this height um, some people use lower grills which require less coals but it's hard to maneuver under, side, under the grill uh, to move the, the coals um, and one good rule of thumb has to do with how long you can uh, st your, put your hand like right at the height of the, um, of the grill it should be around like five seconds two, three, four, five yeah, five to six seconds here, that's good. If it's two seconds, then you're going too quick. You're adding, using too much heat and you're going to overcook it. So, okay. Okay, so some time has passed and let's see uh, how long it's been. Um, I don't know, it's been like 20 minutes, something like that. So we see that things are taking some color over here. And you can see over here. Yep. It's taking some color, but still not enough time to turn it around. And over here we have something that is optional for some people, not optional for a lot of others, uh, which is some good red wine, which like the Yasaro sits a lot better with it. And if it's a good one, like this one, you want to let it breathe for a while, which, I mean, there's a lot of talk around wine. Uh, some of it is uh, just blah, blah. But it's true that if you let it breathe, uh, if you let oxygen or air or something, if you open it a lot beforehand, you drink it, it tastes better. Um, so I'm going to open this one uh, right now and serve a bit so that some air mixes in and I'm going to let it sit for a while. It smells good. This is uh, Malbec wine from this very region of Mendoza. Uh, this is like the main kind of variety, like the variety that is made here in Mendoza province in Argentina and it goes great with asado. So some time has gone by and we're going to replenish, uh, we're going to put some more coals under it because as you can see it's like the coals that were there have uh, died already so a lot of them so we want to replenish them um, as I said before you want more below the thick cuts than below the thin cuts. All right, so we are some more than 30 minutes in and uh, it's gone pretty quick, quicker than I actually wanted. Uh, but it's time to turn it around. Um, as you can see, it's taking some good color. That's the vacío. Uh, the flap, the ribs stick. And the tri tip colita de quadril, also a good color as you can see, and matambre, the rose meat with its lemon. So, 
coal wise looks good it's got enough coals we do the finger thing it's like six seconds till I need to take it out but good to good to continue like this uh, of course I'm adding a bit more firewood as I need to keep producing coals uh, okay okay another typical thing to do uh, picada, what we call picada, which is eating something like cheese and some salami, something like that. The customary thing would be for some of the people here to bring this to me as the asado maker. Um, um, typically, you you might tell me like, what do I do during all that time that uh, I'm making the asado? You guys take too long to make meat? Well, we talk with friends, um, which is what I'm doing between each filming uh, short. Um, we're talking with having a good time with friends, having some cheese, some wine. Cheers, Pablo. Cheers. Okay, so one more thing that I forgot. Uh, when I turned the matam around, the roast meat, one thing that improves the flavor is if you put some little slices of lemon on top of it after you turn it around uh, on the meaty side that's good uh, okay yeah this is going well but I need more wood there. Okay. okay. This is how it's going from the top. But it's still going to be a while. Okay, so I got uh, my friend Paolo here helping. Uh, he's going to cut uh, a tip of the matamre of the rose meat and we're going to have a little try at it. Let's see how this goes. How are we going to stop it? Nice. Ah. No. Okay. Mm. You're in the table. Okay. Okay. It's good. It's got the lemon flavor, right? Yeah. Okay. Gracias, Pablo. Okay, so the tri tip, you see that it's quite thick and it's pretty pink here like not so cooked so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put it like cook the side like this and use anything well actually it stayed like that Okay, I believe it's ready. It's been a while. I haven't replenished the coals in a long while, so it's going to take it slow. It's been an hour and 40 minutes. Okay, so let's start taking some of this stuff out and let's see how it is. Gente a la mesa. And we have people coming to the table. Because this is ready. So here's the vacío. Let's look at it. Okay. So. 
Okay, let's see how the other cats are. So, as I said, we have the we have the vacío here. And let's see how the matambre is looking. The roast meat. So, roast meat here. Let's look at the thicker part. And looks good. And we have the ribs, costilla. Also ready. And a thicker one, colita de cuadril. Fried tip. Also done. Okay. So ready to serve. So if you like this, uh, don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos of cooking, asado and other stuff. Uh, next video will be about uh, the purchase of the meat. So hope you liked it. And bye bye and God bless you.